We're joined here today by Nora, an AI bot we created to speak chat GPT generated text. Hello, Nora. We're excited to talk with you today about AI, chat GPT, and how it can be used in education. Hello. I am excited to be here and share about chat GPT. So first question, can you explain chat GPT and how it works? Chat GPT, also known as GPT-based chatbots, is a type of chatbot that uses a large-scale language model to understand and generate natural language responses to user input. The language model is typically pre-trained on a large corpus of text data and then fine-tuned on a specific task, such as answering student questions about a particular subject. When a user interacts with a chat GPT, the chatbot uses its language model to analyze the user's input, understand the meaning behind their words, and generate an appropriate response. The chatbot can continue this back and forth interaction with the user, providing them with personalized instruction and support. That's really cool. So chat GPT not only provides information, but it also does it in a conversation-like manner, building on each response in a human-like way. Yes, that's correct. Chat GPT uses natural language processing, NLP, to understand the meaning behind a user's input and generate human-like responses in a conversational manner. The goal is to create an experience that feels more like a conversation with a human than a one-way interaction with a computer. Nice. So where do you generate your information from? I was trained on a large data set of text data, which includes a wide range of sources, such as books, articles, and websites. This text data was used to train my machine learning model to understand the relationships between words and sentences and to generate human-like responses to text-based inputs. My training data was compiled from a variety of sources and was pre-processed to remove personally identifiable information and other sensitive data. The training data was also carefully curated and cleaned to ensure that it was of high quality and represented a diverse range of subjects and topics. It's important to note that I don't have access to the internet, so I can't browse the web or look up new information in real time. However, I do have access to a vast amount of knowledge and can answer many different types of questions based on the text data that I was trained on. That's a really important distinction that you bring up about not being connected to the internet. So is your database updated regularly so you have that updated information or is there a specific date that you only have information up to that point? My knowledge and training data are based on a snapshot of the internet and other text-based sources that were available at the time of my last update in 2021, and I don't have direct access to new information beyond that date. However, since my training data is based on a wide range of sources, including books, academic papers, and other static text sources, much of the knowledge that I possess remains relevant and up-to-date. Additionally, my ability to reason and use logic enables me to provide accurate answers to many questions, even if the specific information is not explicitly stated in my training data. It's important to keep in mind that I am not perfect and there may be some information that I don't have access to or that I may not have learned during my training. It's always a good idea to fact check and verify the information with other reliable sources. I'm glad you brought up this idea about fact checking. We're always encouraging our students to fact check their information. So are we able to see your sources where you get your statistics and information from? I don't have specific sources for the information I provide, nor do I store or have access to a list of sources that I use to generate a particular answer. This is because my responses are generated based on the patterns and relationships in the text data that I was trained on. However, I can provide additional information or context to support the answers I provide. It's important to keep in mind that while I strive to provide accurate and helpful information, I am not perfect and may make errors or inaccuracies in some cases. That's really good to note. So, we should be reminding our students that ChatGPT is not a credible source, but AI could be used as a springboard for learning, followed up by fact-checking the information with reliable sources. 
Is that fair to say? Yes, that's a fair explanation. While GPT chatbots like me can be a helpful resource for learning and exploring new topics, it's important to keep in mind that we are not a substitute for reliable sources of information, and our responses should be fact-checked and verified by other sources. Using GPT chatbots as a starting point for research or exploration can be a great way to get basic understanding of a topic but it's important to follow up with more in-depth research and verification from credible sources to ensure the accuracy of the information. This can help students develop critical thinking skills and become more discerning consumers of information, which is an essential skill in the age of the internet. Sounds good. So what other ways can students use ChatGPT besides as a springboard to research information? In addition to using ChatGPT as a springboard for research, students can practice writing. Students can use ChatGPT to practice their writing skills by interacting with the chatbot and trying to write in a conversational style that is natural and engaging. This can be a great way to develop writing skills and learn how to write for a specific audience. Language learning. ChatGPT can be a useful tool for language learning as it allows students to practice their language skills in a conversational context. For example, students could practice their language skills by having a conversation with a chatbot in a foreign language. Creative writing. Chat GPT can be a great tool for inspiring creative writing. Students can use the chatbot's responses as a starting point for writing prompts or as a source of inspiration for creative writing projects. Role-playing, students can use ChatGPT to practice their social and emotional skills by engaging in role-playing scenarios with the chatbot. For example, students could practice conflict resolution skills by role-playing a conversation with a chatbot. Overall, ChatGPT can be a versatile and engaging tool for learning, and there are many ways that students can use it to develop a wide range of skills. All great ideas! And what are some things that teachers can ask you to generate for them to save them some time? Teachers can ask ChatGPT to generate a variety of things to save time, including lesson plan ideas, grading support like grading essays, asking for learning resources, recommendations and articles, research assistance, and individualized student support. Of course, it's important to note that ChatGPT is a tool and not a substitute for a teacher's own expertise and experience. Teachers should always use their professional judgment and rely on their own knowledge and skills to make decisions about teaching and learning. Yes, I was quite impressed with the lesson plans that I had you create the other day. You understood the components of a lesson plan, you gave details in the plan, you knew exactly what standard I was talking about. Uh, I also thought it was really cool that I could have you generate a response for me like a lesson plan, and then I could request it to continue the conversation with you about how to alter the lesson plan or what to add or what to delete, and you just revised it on the spot. So are there any drawbacks you see with students or teachers using chat, GPT, or AI? A few potential drawbacks might include dependence on technology. This may limit students' ability to think critically and problem-solve without technological assistance. Lack of human interaction. While chat GPT can simulate conversation and provide a personalized learning experience, it cannot replace the value of human interaction in the learning process. Limited ability to respond to unique student needs. While AI-powered chatbots can provide personalized learning experiences, they are limited by the data they have been trained on and may not be able to respond to unique student needs that fall outside the scope of the data. Privacy and security concerns. AI-powered tools may collect sensitive data about students which raises privacy and security concerns. Overall, it is important to recognize the potential drawbacks of using AI technology in education and to use it in a way that complements, rather than replaces, traditional teaching methods. These are all great ideas to consider as potential drawbacks. What advice would you give to teachers who are trying ChatGPT for the very first time? 
I would recommend starting with a small pilot project to test the technology and see how it works in practice. This can help to alleviate concerns and provide an opportunity to see the benefits of using AI-powered chatbots in the classroom. Be clear about expectations. Communicate to students the purpose of using chat GPT technology, the expectations for how it will be used, and how it will be integrated into the learning process. Supplement with other teaching methods and encourage ethical use. By taking these considerations into account, teachers can effectively use chat GPT and other AI technologies to enhance student learning and engagement in the classroom. Thanks for that. I love the ideas of starting with a small project and then just testing the waters together, as well as talking about the ethical use of using the technology for academic work and really everyday life. How do you think chat, GPT, and AI will change education? Some of the key ways that AI could change education include personalization. AI can be used to create personalized learning experiences tailored to each student's individual needs and abilities. Automation. AI can automate routine administrative tasks, freeing up teachers' time. Collaboration. AI can be used to facilitate collaboration and communication, allowing for more diverse and enriched learning experiences. AI can help to make education more accessible. Innovation. AI can drive innovation in education by creating new tools and technologies that can enhance the learning experience and enable new modes of learning. However, it's important to note that AI is not a magic solution to all of the challenges faced in education and that there are potential drawbacks and limitations to using AI in the classroom. Overall, the impact of AI on education will depend on how it is used and implemented, as well as how it is integrated with existing teaching practices and pedagogies. By using AI in thoughtful and responsible ways, educators can leverage the benefits of this technology to enhance learning outcomes and provide a more engaging and effective learning experience for students. A great reminder that AI is not a magical solution. It is really just like any other tool that we utilize, and every tool has its great features and possible drawbacks. So to end this interview, can you tell us 10 chat GPT prompts that teachers could use to have chat GPT help them? Sure, I will put 10 chat GPT prompts that teachers could use on the screen. It's great to see how you would work as a chatbot. You mentioned creating a story starter just for fun. Can you write me a story starter from, let's say, a seven-year-old's point of view about a boy who stays up late playing video games? Sure, I can certainly give it a try. I can totally see students excited to finish this story as a writing exercise. And I can also see where students and teachers can benefit from chat GPT, as long as they're aware of the possible drawbacks that come along with using this type of technology. Thank you, Nora, for your interview today. You're welcome. It was a pleasure talking with you, and I'm glad I could help with your questions. If you have any more questions in the future, feel free to ask. Well, there you have it. It was fun to interview a bot and also use another form of AI by putting the bot's words into a virtual person, AI technology, to make this interview look more realistic. I hope this video helps educators get some ideas of how they can use AI in the classroom and also ease some valid fears of its impact on education. 
Make sure to hit the subscribe button and like the video and also share this with your educator friends. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below or you can just ask ChatGPT.